Welcome to the Forest Pest Campground Training hosted by the Adirondack Park Invasive Plant Program. Throughout this training, we're going to cover a little bit on invasive forest pest prevention, identification, and how to report them. One big vector for invasive insect pests is firewood. So I'm, her, I'm sure you've heard the messaging around don't move firewood or buy it where you've burned it. And this is because firewood is capable of transporting the eggs, larvae, and adults of various different insect species. So in New York, we actually have laws around firewood. Untreated firewood may not be transported into New York from another state. And within New York, untreated firewood may not be moved more than 50 miles from its source. So this all applies to untreated firewood. If your firewood has been heat treated, um, the, the mileage restriction does not apply. So if you're purchasing untreated firewood, it must be labeled and it must identify the source. If you're purchasing treated firewood, it must also be labeled and that label should say that it is New York approved heat treated and that it is pest free. Some insect species of concern. So here's just an overview of some terrestrial species that we cover at APEP. Um, today we're focusing on emerald ash borer, hemlock woolly adelgid, and spotted lanternfly. Emerald ash borer is this cute little green buprested beetle and as the name suggests, uh, we're concerned about this species because it feeds on ash trees. So the adults of the emerald ash borer have that very characteristic emerald green body. Um, the wings are kind of a, a metallic green, but if you flip them over, their abdomen is more of a, a purplish red. These guys are less than an inch long the adults emerge in late spring and they will fly from June to August. One way to tell if a tree has been infested by the species is to look at the bark. So if you're looking, if you flip the bark over, um, this is especially useful for firewood. Um, if you're looking at the underside of the bark, you might find these S-shaped larval galleries and this is where the larvae have been living their life and moving around underneath the bark layer of the tree and so once the larvae need to leave the tree they will um, make their way through the bark and in doing so they leave these d-shaped exit holes in the photo on the bottom you can see uh, there is a pencil for scale so these holes are quite tiny um, if you find holes on the outside of the bark that are perfectly circular, that will not be emerald ash borer. These leave the very distinct D-shaped hole. So they're flat on one edge and round on the rest. And also in looking at ash trees, um, you don't have to take the tree apart or even look super closely at the bark. You might see other things. Um, if you look on the left side, sort of in the background, you can see an ash tree that is, the bark looks like the normal color. And then if you look in the middle, you can tell that this tree has what we call blonding. So the bark is starting to peel off and it, it looks kind of a lighter tan rather than a darker gray. Um, you can also look at the canopy. Um, so making sure um, that any dieback you notice isn't from physical damage. So if, if a branch is broken, of course, it's gonna look like there's some dieback. But if, if there's no physical damage and the canopy doesn't look super healthy and you also see some blonding and maybe some excessive woodpecker damage, um, then you can get a closer look and see if you can find those D-shaped exit holes to see if there are um, if there's more of a chance that this tree has been infested.
by Emerald Ash Borer. Hemlock woolly adelgid is another species we're concerned about. This one is a very, very small scale insect that feeds on hemlock trees. The adults of hemlock woolly adelgid, you can see in this photo, they are the little black specks. Um, they're usually a dark reddish brown or a purplish black color. And in the winter, the females will create this uh, white woolly ovisac. And so that is really what makes the species visible. And so from November to April, they will create these ovisacs. And also during that time, they are not mobile. So surveys for this species are usually done in the winter. You can go to hemlock trees and flip over branches to check the underside for these white woolly ovisacs. The nymphs will emerge and are active between April and June. And in this photo, if you look right at the base of the hemlock needle, right there attached to the branch is a nymph. And so they will attach on the undersides of these branches um, and they will feed there. These nymphs from April to June are quite active. So it's not advised to survey for the species during that time because you might have a higher chance of spreading it from tree to tree. So while you shouldn't really go around flipping branches over um, to check individual trees from April to June, um, you can get a sense of overall tree health by looking at uh, trees from a distance. So hemlock woolly adelgid really weakens trees and can kill them within four to 10 years. And so the tree on the left here, you can tell isn't doing so great. They've, it's lost a lot of needles and they're turning yellow. Um, but the tree on the right here is a healthy hemlock tree. And what you'll notice is the bright green growth. So in the spring and early summer, if you notice that the hemlock trees are putting out this bright green growth, that means they're, they're doing all right, they're healthy. But if you notice, there might be a few trees that are kind of turning pale green or gray, and they don't have that new growth, um, it might be worth it to take um, more of an up-close look at that tree. Another insect species we're concerned about is spotted lanternfly. And this one is not yet present in the Adirondack Park, but we are concerned about it because it has over 70 host species, uh, many of which are, uh, are agricultural crops. And it's also a concern because its preferred native host is a different invasive plant called Tree of Heaven. And this plant is present in the Adirondacks. There are a few different nymph stages, so those are called instars. The first three instars will look like the photo on the left. They're um, black with white spots about a quarter to half an inch long. Once they reach the fourth instar, they will start to turn this red color um, with black and white spots. And they're about three quarters of an inch long at that point. And these nymphs will be present between May and September. As adults, this species is quite large. They're about an inch long and with their wings closed, uh, half an inch wide. So with their wings spread open, like in the top photo, people think they look like a moth or a butterfly, but they are um, truly a plant hopper. So usually you will see them resting like in the bottom photo with their wings tented back. But with their wings spread out, we can look at the four wings. These are the pinkish tan with uh, black spots, and those black spots will be more concentrated towards the tips. And the hind wings are black and red with a white band. And with the wings spread open, you're also able to see that the abdomen is yellow with black bands. So as adults, uh, the species is present from July to December, and they will fly
fly as well as jump. One main way that this species can spread is through their eggs. So if you look towards the bottom of this photo, right above the text box, you'll see a row of eggs there. And on the top of each egg is an operculum. And so this is kind of a hatch that will open to allow the nymphs to emerge. If you find eggs without that operculum, it means the nymphs have hatched and they're long gone. Uh, but if the operculum is still there, then you still have a chance to scrape those eggs off. So females will lay these eggs throughout the fall, and then they will be covered by this uh, creamy substance that you can see towards the top of the photo. And this will harden and turn a dark brown, and this serves to protect and camouflage the eggs. So this camouflage is part of why it's so easy for these eggs to be spread. Um, they can be laid not only on trees, but on items that we tend to move around a lot, like cars and trailers and RVs, and they oftentimes go unnoticed before we move and uh, further facilitate the spread of the species. I've already mentioned a little bit about some of the damage that these insects can cause. Uh, they really like our crop species like our grapes and hops and apples and other species that are important to New York's economy. And so they use their piercing sucking mouth parts to feed directly on the phloem layer of these plants, which directly weakens the plant and also as a byproduct of this feeding they produce a sticky honeydew that will collect at the base of trees that are heavily invaded, and this honeydew can form a sooty mold. Um, and also, as I already mentioned, these cryptic egg masses can be unintentionally moved throughout the state. And I, I really like including this photo because I it took me a long time to see the insect. I was so focused on the apples. So uh, see how long it takes you to notice the spotted lanternfly in this one. If you have found any of these species or any other invasive species, you can use IMAP invasives to report them. So this is a mobile app that you can find in the App Store or on Google Play. And if you do not already have an account, you can sign up for one through IMAP Invasives. Uh, that first link there will allow you to create an IMAP Invasives account if you need to. New York State also has their own IMAP Invasives homepage. And if you have any questions, the New York Natural Heritage Program has a wonderful resource page to help answer any of those. At APIP, we have a full list of invasive species that we are concerned about in the Adirondack Park, and you can find that through adkinvasives.com. We also have a brochure you can look through to get more information on invasive animals, not only terrestrial, but aquatic as well. Thank you so much for attending this training.